Hello, today we're going to be talking about holding pattern entries. This is one of the most, if not the most difficult uh, challenges for instrument pilots, both in training and in real world flying. So I've had to develop for myself uh, a system that was simple, easy to remember, and easy to apply while in flight. I used to, when hearing uh, instructions for a hold, either from my instructor or from ATC, my, my brain would turn into a fried egg trying to figure out how I'm going to get into the pattern. So hopefully after uh, viewing this video and looking at the slides that I've created, it'll uh, help you in some way when uh, receiving instructions to enter a hold. The most challenging holds I find are the ones that are unpublished. You don't get to look on a chart and see what the hold looks like. Okay, how am I going to enter this thing? In some cases, you're able to make some advanced planning for a hold that's published. Uh, a good example of that would be on a missed approach hold. You, you get to study that in advance and kind of figure things out ahead of time, but you don't get to do that when you receive uh, uh, instructions for an unpublished hold. So let's take a look at uh, some examples, and uh, again, hopefully this will be helpful to you. There are three types of entries into a holding pattern. There's the direct, the teardrop, and the parallel entries. And I'm going to show examples of each of those three entry types. And then I'm going to follow those slides with an, an example in, flown in the simulator in my Piper Cherokee. And as the video is playing, I'm going to be narrating and explaining what's going on at each phase of each flight for each entry. There are two types of patterns. One is the standard pattern, which is right turns. And the other is the non-standard pattern, which consists of left turns. If you receive instructions from ATC to hold at a particular fix, and you don't receive the instructions to perform that hold with left turns, then you assume that it's right turns or a standard holding pattern. Now, a holding pattern can be flown at any type of fix. It could be a VOR, it could be a GPS waypoint, it could be a VOR intersection. But in this video, we're going to use a, a VOR at Olympia, Washington, the uh, Oscar Lima Micro OLM VOR. So all the three videos that I'm going to include in this, which again will show examples of uh, direct teardrop and parallel entries, are all going to be flown on uh, VOR radials to a VOR station as the fix. Okay, so in this first example, we're going to demonstrate and talk through a teardrop entry, and this is going to be non-standard uh, holding pattern with left turns. So we're flying along, and this slide depicts what we see on our heading indicator. We're flying on a heading of 250, and we're flying directly to the OLM VOR on the 070 radial. Remember, radials always go away from the station. So this is the 070 radial inbound on heading 250. And ATC gives us the following instruction. November 7428 Romeo, hold at the Olympia VOR on the 220 radial left turns, maintain 3000. Now, as I said earlier, when I received instructions like that, my brain would turn to mush trying to figure out, okay, what does this look like in, uh, and how am I going to enter it? Until I started using the heading indicator as a map, almost like a moving map. And so that's what I'm going to show you here. Now, the first thing we're going to do, and this is a very important first step, is we're going to take that fix and we're going to visualize it right in the center of our directional gyro. Remember, we're using the DG as a map. And then we're going to take the things that we know and help us draw the map. And the first thing we know is we know where the fix is and we know our heading. So we're going to take our heading and draw an imaginary line directly to the fix. And the next thing we know is we know the assigned radial, which is the 220 radial. And then if you have a heading bug, move it to the assigned radial, in this case, 220 degrees. Then visualize an imaginary line on the radial to the fix. Okay, so let's slow things down here a little bit. So here are our known values. We know our heading or the radial that we're currently flying, which is the 070 radial on heading 250. And we know the fix that we're flying to, and we know the radial that we're flying on to the fix. The other known value is that we're going to be flying this pattern with left turns. And that's going to become important as we break down our visualization map 
into the teardrop parallel and direct entry options. Since we're flying left turns in a non-standard pattern, we're going to move to the left side of our directional gyro at exactly 90 degrees from our direction of travel. In this case, it's 160. And then the next step is we're going to move up from there exactly 20 degrees, in this case, to the 180 mark on the directional gyro. This is what I refer to as the rule of 70. And if you can remember the rule of 70 as it applies to all of the examples we're going to give here and using this technique, it will make things very simple for you. Now, why do I call it the rule of 70? Because you're always going 70 degrees from your direction of travel. In the case of left turns, it's 70 degrees to the left. In the case of right turns or a standard holding pattern, it's 70 degrees to the right of your direction of travel. And the next step is to draw an imaginary line from the 70 degree mark across the directional gyro. Now I'm gonna slow things down here again. So what we have is everything that we know, we're drawing a map. We're taking our direction of travel. We're drawing an imaginary line to our imaginary fix in the center of the directional gyro. Because we know we're doing left turns, we're coming to the left uh, side of the directional gyro exactly 90 degrees, moving up 20 degrees from there, which is the 70 degree mark from our direction of travel and drawing a straight line across the directional gyro. The other thing we've drawn on our map is the radial that we're going to be flying to the fix. So here we have a map drawn on our directional gyro that will help us visualize how to enter the pattern and what the pattern will look like as we fly it. Now that we've drawn our map divided into what I call three slices of the pie, let's take a look at what each entry sector represents. The first sector is the teardrop sector, and it's easy to remember because the smallest slice of the pie, or the tiny slice, represents teardrop, tiny for teardrop. So if our radial falls within this sector, that's the type of entry we're going to be flying in order to enter the holding pattern. The next sector is the parallel sector. So if our radial falls anywhere within this sector, we're going to fly a parallel entry. And finally, the largest of the three sectors is the direct entry sector. So if our radial falls within this sector, we're going to fly a direct entry. So in our present example, we see that the radial that we're going to fly to the VOR falls within the teardrop sector. So here's what our entry is going to look like and what the pattern is going to look like in relation to our direction of flight and the fix. Okay, so now we have all the information we need in order to enter this holding pattern and to fly it successfully. Let's now take a look at other things that we need to be aware of. One of those is, what is our inbound and outbound course? Well, in this case, since we're flying the 220 radial inbound, we're flying a 040 inbound course, which of course is the reciprocal of 220. So 220 minus 180 is gonna be our inbound course of 040. And of course, we also know our outbound course is 220 degrees. Now, a teardrop entry requires that you know your outbound course, which we've already determined is 220 degrees. Now, for a left pattern or a non-standard pattern, you're adding 30 degrees to the outbound course. So 220 plus 30 equals 250. So that's the heading we're going to fly once we cross our fix in order to execute the teardrop entry. If we were flying a right holding pattern or a standard pattern, we would take our outbound course and we would subtract 30 degrees. The way I remember this is left larger, right reduce. So in our present example, 250 degrees happens to be the heading that we're already flying. So no adjustments are necessary after we cross our fix. Once we reach the fix, we continue flying straight ahead in this case for one minute. After one minute, we execute a standard rate turn to the left and intercept the inbound radial, which is the 220 radial, on heading 040 inbound. Congratulations, you're now established in the hold, a left turn or non-standard holding pattern. Now let's take a look at a flight flown on the X-Plane simulator, demonstrating precisely the same holding instructions from ATC. November 7428 Romeo, hold on the Olympia VOR on the 220 radial, left turns, maintain 3000.
No, here we are flying heading 250, and we're tuned to the Olympia VOR, and we're flying inbound on the 070 radial. So now we've received our instructions from ATC. Hold on the Olympia VOR on the 220 radial, left turns, maintain 3000. So we've moved our heading bug, as depicted in the slides, over to the 220 heading on the directional gyro. And then we're drawing in our mind the imaginary line on that radial to the fix. And then we're visualizing the holding pattern that we're going to be flying when we reach the fix. So we're picturing ourselves doing the teardrop entry. And of course we want to execute the teardrop on the protected side of the hold. So here as we get close to the station, and we're about one nautical mile from the station, the course deviation indicator becomes increasingly more sensitive. Now because it's so sensitive this close to the station, we don't want to make overcorrections in order to maintain the CDI in the center. So we're going to maintain our present heading, and we're looking now from for the to indication to flip over to a from indication, and that indicates that we have just crossed the, the fix, which in this case is a VOR station. So we're still looking for that to, to flip over to a from. Okay, there it is. So now we begin timing for one minute, and we're gonna maintain our present heading of 250 because we've already taken our outbound course and added 30 degrees, which happens to be 250. So we're timing this for one minute, and after one minute, we're going to make a standard rate turn to the left, and we're going to in intercept the 220 radial inbound on heading 040. So here I'm visualizing in my mind, using the directional gyro as a map, what it is I'm going to do when I reach my turning point. Okay, so I'm watching my stop launch, looking for the one minute mark. Get down on my stop launch. Coming up on one minute. And now I've reached the one minute mark and I've begun a standard rate turn to the left. So since I'm going to be flying the OLM radial 220, my inbound course, I already know, is 040. So I've set my Omni bearing selector on the VOR to 040. I'm continuing my turn here. As you can see on the directional gyro, standard rate turn, which is indicated on the, the turn coordinator where the wingtip meets, it, meets the mark. In a, in a full 360 degree turn, it would take two minutes. We're turning 180 degrees here, so that's one minute. Now I'm looking for the course deviation indicator to center. It's centered there. And since we've slightly um, overshot it, we're going to make sure that we re-intercept it when we complete our turn. So instead of turning out to rolling out on 040, we're going to turn a little bit to the left of that and recapture the course deviation indicator. OK, now I've reset my heading bug to the 040 heading, and again, I'm overshooting it just a little bit to recapture that CDI. Looking forward to come in. Now it's starting to come in, so I'm coming right. And there it is, centered. So I'm gonna maintain 040. And as soon as I'm, I cross the station, the two indication is going to flip to a from indication. And then we're going to begin a standard rate turn to the left. Now, as I said, the CDI becomes increasingly more sensitive as you get close to the station. So you don't want to keep chasing it. 
So I'm going to maintain my present heading of 040. Again, I'm looking for the two indication to flip over to a from. And as soon as it happens, I begin a standard return to the left to execute my non-standard or left turn holding pattern. There you can see the CDI starting to flip over. Again, I'm not reacting to that yet. I'm looking for the from indication. There's the from. I'm starting my left turn. Again, standard rate. Looking down at the turn coordinator, placing the wingtip on the left marker and holding that until we roll out on a reciprocal heading. Up to two zero. Of course, I'm doing a uh, instrument scan, which would include the altimeter, vertical speed indicator, tachometer, of course, the heading indicator, and the attitude indicator constantly scanning the instruments. Okay, we're coming out on the reciprocal heading of 220, which is our outbound course. And as soon as we roll out, we're going to start our timer for one minute. Here we're coming up on 220. And rolling out. And I just looked down and started my stopwatch. And we're going to continue this for one minute. And then, of course, a standard return again to the left. And then we're going to re-intercept the inbound radial. So again, watching the stopwatch. And once we complete two circuits, we're going to go ahead and pause the video. And then we're going to take a look at four flight on our iPad and see what our hold looks like. Okay, still looking for one minute. Look it down. Okay, there's a minute. Standard rate turn to the left. Again, looking at the turn coordinator, keeping the wingtip on the left marker. Watching my altitude, scanning my attitude indicator, heading indicator, looking over at the tachometer, airspeed indicator. So now we're, we're looking um, at our VOR1. And we're looking for the CDI to center as we complete our turn. If it doesn't exactly center, we'll make whatever corrections are necessary on our heading to recapture it. There, it's starting to come in. In a perfect world, it'll be perfectly centered once we roll out on our desired heading where the heading bug is set on 040. And it looks like in this case, it's gonna be close. So instead of rolling out at 040, I'm going to go a little bit left of that in order to recapture the CDI, but not too much because it's pretty close. Okay, we're going to fly that inbound. CDI starting to get really sensitive as we get close to the station. And if you look over there to the left, you'll see that we're 0 0.6 miles from the VOR. And we're looking for a from indication. There 
it is. And then again a standard rate turn to the left. And once we complete two circuits around the hold, we're going to pause the video and again take a look at four flight on our iPad and evaluate our holding pattern entry and the holding pattern itself. So again, doing a primary instrument scan, paying attention to altitude, heading, attitude indicator, airspeed, listening to the engine, looking at the tachometer, okay, we're coming close to our reciprocal heading, 220, we're going to roll out on that and start the stopwatch. There it is, stopwatch started, and again, once we complete this circuit and we reach the fix, we're going to go ahead and pause the video and take a look at the fourth flight track log. Turning to our inbound course, looking at the course deviation indicator. Again, as I said, in a perfect world, the CDI centers exactly where you when you roll out on your desired heading. That rarely happens, so make make adjustments as necessary. Steering either left or right of the radial to capture the CDI, as the case may be. Here I'm looking at the CDI and it's not quite coming in, so I'm going to roll out just a little bit shy of my desired inbound heading, just so that we recapture it. Now it looks like it's centering, so I'm going to roll out right there and hold that, maybe steer just a little bit to the right of 040. There, I'm just recalibrating the directional gyro to correct for any precession that may have occurred. And then as soon as the uh, flag flips from a two to a front, we'll go ahead and take a look at, at four flight. And I'm just turning a little bit to the right of 040, again, because I'm, I'm watching that CDI. It's just slightly... meaning we're slightly left of our radial, so we're steering right to recapture it. Okay, now we're 0 0.2 miles, as you can see over there if you look at the GPS, 0 0.1. So we should see the two flag flip to a from. See the CDI swinging and there's the from indication. Okay, so we've done two complete circuits. Let's go ahead and pause, and uh, we'll take a look again at our track log on four flight. Okay, so let's make that a little bit bigger so we can see what we have going on. 
That's our inbound course of 250. And there we cross the fix, which is the Olympia VOR. And then we make our left turn and intercept the inbound radial. That's our teardrop. And then we make a standard rate turn upon reaching the fix after one minute and another standard rate turn. Re-intercept the inbound radial, standard rate turn left, and continue in the holding pattern. And here we cross the fix, and, uh, and now we're paused. So that's the teardrop entry with a non-standard left turns. Now we're going to take a look at a parallel entry. So again, we're going to begin by receiving our air traffic control instructions for the hold. November 7428 Romeo, hold northeast of the Olympia VOR on the 045 radial, maintain 3000. So as will always be the case, the first thing you want to do is to place your fix, in this case the VOR, in the center of your directional gyro. Then you want to take your present heading and draw an imaginary line from that heading to the fix. Then the next thing you want to do is to visualize where the radial is on your directional gyro. In this case, the instructions were to fly the 045 radial to the Olympia VOR. Then, as a reference, we want to move our heading bug to the assigned inbound radial, which is 045 degrees. Then, we draw an imaginary line on the radial to the fix. And in this case, since we didn't receive any specific instruction to make left turns, we assume it's a standard holding pattern with right turns. And since it's right turns, we come to the right of the directional gyro at 90 degrees to our present heading. And then from there, we move up 20 degrees, and in this case, to 190 degrees. Applying our rule of 70, this is 70 degrees from our present heading. And then we draw an imaginary line from 190 degrees across the directional gyro. Now we have the three slices to our pie, indicating the smallest sector, which is the teardrop. And again, we remember that by T for tiny equals T for teardrop, and the parallel entry adjacent to that, and then of course the direct entry, which is the largest slice of the pie. Now we see in this example that our radial falls within the parallel sector, so we know we're going to be making a parallel entry. Now we know what type of entry we're going to be making, and we can visualize the holding pattern racetrack on our directional gyro. And since we're flying inbound on the 045 radial, we know our inbound course is the reciprocal of 045, or 225 degrees. And our outbound course is 045 degrees. Since we know we're going to be flying a parallel entry, Immediately upon reaching the fix, we make a left turn to our outbound course of 045 degrees. After flying outbound for one minute, we make a standard rate turn to the left. In this case, we have to turn 225 degrees to intercept the 045 radial inbound. That gives us an intercept angle of 45 degrees. Once we've intercepted the inbound radial, we fly that to the fix, and upon reaching the fix, we can make a standard rate turn to the right and then continue in the racetrack pattern for standard right turns in the hold. And now that you're established in the hold, you make as many circuits as necessary in the racetrack pattern given the situation. Now let's take a look at the previous example of a parallel entry in the X-Plane simulator. So now we're on heading 120 on the 300 radial to the Olympia VOR. Now we receive our air traffic control instructions. November 7428 Romeo hold northeast of the Olympia VOR on the 045 radial, maintain 3000. So I turn my heading bug to 045 as a reference. Then I look to the right at 90 degrees to my present heading, move up 20 degrees and draw an imaginary line from 190 across the directional gyro. And then I immediately see that the radial I'm going to fly falls within the parallel entry sector. So now I'm watching the CDI as I fly toward the Olympia VOR on the 300 radial on heading 120. Right now we're 2.7 miles from the VOR.
So now I'm visualizing the radial and then I'm visualizing the racetrack pattern that I'm going to be flying to the VOR using my directional gyro as a map. I also know that I need to make my entry on the protected side of the hold. So when I fly my parallel entry, I'm going to make a left turn to, re to intercept the radial inbound. Now 1.3 miles from the station, the CDI start is going to start to become more sensitive as we get close to the station. Keep an eye on that. So here I know as soon as I get a front indication, I need to make a left turn to 045. There the CDI is starting to swing, we know we're getting really close to the station, and it should flip over here any minute. So now I'm executing my left turn, we get the from indication, and I start my timer for one minute. So again, we're turning to the outbound heading of 045 degrees. Now I'm resetting my Omni bearing selector to the inbound course of 225 degrees. <laughs> and here I'm moving my heading bug to my inbound course of 225 degrees. So again, right now I'm still looking at my stopwatch for the one minute mark. And there's one minute. Standard rate turn to the left. Now remember we want to intercept that inbound radial at a 45 degree angle. So we have to turn past the heading bug by 45 degrees. We can see the CDI already starting to swing. Standard rate turn, looking at the turn coordinator, keeping the wingtip on the left marker. So now we're going to continue past the 225 heading and execute a 45 degree intercept angle. So we want to recapture the CDI and then turn to our inbound course directly to the station. Okay, they were rolling out and we're watching the CDI. close to the station and even small changes in heading have a large effect on the course deviation indicator. So there we see we've flown through the radial and so we're going to make a slight correction to the right to recapture it. It seems like a large deviation, but because we're so close to the station,
even small changes in your heading have a large effect on the CDI. So there we see our from indication. So we can begin our turn. So now we're turning right, since this is a standard holding pattern. And we're going to continue in our standard rate turn to the reciprocal heading of 045 degrees. Remember, air traffic control doesn't grade you or care the method you use to enter a pattern, whether it's teardrop, parallel, or direct. What they do care about is that you stay on the protected side of the hold and follow the holding instructions. So here we are coming up on the reciprocal heading of 045 degrees, and we're going to hold that for one minute. Starting the clock. Stopwatch. <clears throat> Maintaining 3,000. Doing our instrument scan. Now we're coming up on a minute. one minute. Standard rate turn to the right. <clears throat> now we're looking to intercept the, the radial inbound on hitting 225. There we see the CDI starting to center. And they'll make whatever corrections are necessary to re-intercept it. So in this case, we're going to need to fly past the 225 heading to intercept that radial. <coughs> so here we are flying just slightly past the heading of 225. And we should start to see the CDI start to center. And it's starting to come in. Now we're going to turn left to our 225 heading. And we know we're getting really close to the station, so we're not going to make corrections to try to chase that needle at this point. So we're going to roll out right here. And now we're looking for the 2 to flip to a from indication. Now if we look over at our GPS, we know we're at 0 0.3 miles from the station. And upon reaching it, again, a standard return to the right. And we'll do one more time around the racetrack, and then we'll take a look at 4 flight. There's the from indication, here's the right turn. <coughs> Again, we're going to come around to a reciprocal heading of 045 and time that for one minute.
so in this case, uh, set a rig turn to the right. We want the wingtip on the turn coordinator on the right hash mark. Coming up on reciprocal heading, we're going to roll out here and start our clock. There it is. Stopwatch started. And looking for one minute. And as I said, we're just going to make one more standard rate turn to the right, track that inbound to the station, and then we'll take a look at the track log on the fourth flight. <coughs> As we make our turn, we're going to be looking at the CDI and make whatever corrections are necessary on rollout to intercept the radio. center when we roll out on our desired heading. <clears throat> Looks like we got lucky that time. There's a lot of factors that are going to affect that, uh, not least of which is winds, speed, and wind direction. Okay, so we're holding this into the station, looking from the to to flip to a from. And then we'll pause the flight and take a look at the track log in for flight. <coughs> now we're at 0 0.9, 0 0.8 miles from the station. We'll make slight corrections, but we're not going to chase the CDI all over the place as we get closer to the VOR. the flight and take a look at the track log. Okay, so let's zoom in. So there's our inbound course. And again, once we reached the station, we made an immediate turn to a heading of 045. And then we tracked that outbound for one minute. And then a standard rate turn to the left, 225 degrees to re-intercept the inbound radial and then a standard rate turn to the right, time for one minute, standard rate turn to the right, intercept the radial back to the station, and then a standard rate turn to the right again, timing it after rollout for one minute, and, th and then after the minute is up, right turn and to the station. And that brings us to where we are now. So that's an example of a parallel entry. Now we're gonna take a look at a direct entry. So as in our previous example, this one's going to begin with a heading of 120, tracking inbound on the 300 radial to the Olympia VOR. The difference here is the air traffic control instructions include left turns rather than right turns. So this will give you a chance to see the difference in your holding pattern entry. As in every case, we begin by placing the fix in the center of the directional gyro. Next, we visualize an imaginary line from our heading drawn directly to the fix. 
Then we move the heading bug to the assigned radial of 045 degrees and place an imaginary line from the 045 radial to the fix in the center of the directional gyro. And since we know we're going to be making left turns, instead of going 90 degrees to the right side of the directional gyro, we come 90 degrees to the left. And then, following our rule of 70, we come up from the 90 degree position, 20 degrees to give us 70 degrees from our heading. We then draw an imaginary line from the 70 degree position through the fix to the other side of the heading indicator, giving us the three slices of our pie. In this case, we see that the assigned radial falls within the direct entry sector. You'll also notice that the assigned radial falls very close to the teardrop entry sector as well. I deliberately selected this example to show you that it would be completely proper to enter, in this case, either direct or teardrop. Now we can visualize our holding pattern on the heading indicator, and we know that we're going to be making a direct entry. Now we can see that our outbound course is 045 degrees, and our inbound course is 225 degrees. Now upon reaching the fix, we make a standard rate turn to the left to directly enter the left holding pattern. Now I would add, because this is so close to a teardrop entry, I intentionally create some delay upon reaching the fix before initiating my turn. Here we continue our turn to the left until we intercept the 045 radial inbound on heading 225. We're now established in the hold, making as many circuits as necessary as the situation dictates. Now let's take a look at a demonstration flight flown in X-Plane. Now here we are flying on heading 120 on the 300 radial to the Olympia VOR. And we received the following instruction from ATC. November 7428 Romeo, hold at the Olympia VOR on the 045 radial, left turns, maintain 3000. So now we know we're on the 045 radial, so we're turning our heading bug to 045. We also know that we're assigned a non-standard or left holding pattern. So we come to the left side of our directional gyro at 90 degrees to our heading, come up 20 degrees, and then draw our imaginary line following the rule of 70s, in this case, from 050 through the imaginary fix to the other side of the heading indicator. Now, looking at our heading bug, it falls within the direct entry sector. So now we prepare ourselves for a direct entry. But we also notice that it falls very close to the teardrop entry. And because of this, I plan on creating a slight delay after crossing the fix before making my standard rate turn to the left to enter the pattern directly. Now here we're three miles from the fix. And holding on the 300 radial on heading 120. So again, as soon as we reach the fix, we're gonna create a slight delay, approximately 15 to 20 seconds, just so that we don't start our standard return to the left too early. Making a slight heading correction to hold the radial. And again, as always, the holding pattern entry has to happen on the protected side of the hold. 2.1 from the fix. Again, monitoring our instruments with our instrument scan, monitoring altitude 
maintaining 3000 vertical speed indicator. Artificial horizon, heading indicator. Of course, our VOR number one, tachometer, constantly scanning the entrance. We're now at 0.7, so the CDI should start becoming really sensitive as we get really close to the station here. Here we see it starting to swing. We're not going to chase it. We're looking for a from indication. Now 0.2, looking over here at the GPS. 0.1. And we should see a from indication. There it is. So now we just started my stopwatch. And again, because this direct entry is so close to a teardrop, we're going to create a little bit of delay before we make our standard rate turn to the left. And that's to avoid flying through the inbound radial. Now I'm setting the Omni bearing selector to my inbound course. That's set. Check out my clock and making my standard rate turn to the left. There again on the turn coordinator, the wingtip, it goes on the left hash mark. And I'm going to continue following that all the way around and looking at the course deviation indicator. Set the heading mode to the inbound course, 225. And here we're looking for the two to switch over to a from, so we know we're at the station. GPS is showing 0.3. There's the front indication. Standard return to the left. So in this example, the course deviation indicator never did center, which means we turned inside of the radial, the inbound radial. But I was looking at my GPS and saw that it was 0.3, so I continued on my course look for the from indication to initiate my left turn. So now we're making a standard rate turn to the left to the reciprocal heading of 045 for our outbound light. and then we're going to start our stopwatch and time it for one minute. As in the previous examples, we're going to make two times around the holding pattern, and then upon reaching the fix after two circuits, we're going to stop the video and take a look at our track log in four flight. So now we're in 045 heading, and uh, the stopwatch is running, looking for one minute.
there's a one minute scenery turn to the left. Now we're looking to intercept the inbound radial, so we're watching our CDI. Again, in a perfect world, it'll be centered upon reaching our inbound heading of 225. starting to move. And I'm going to roll out a little bit early because I know that I'm a little bit off my radial so I want to intercept it. So I'm holding slightly to the right because I know I'm left of my radial. And wait for that to center and then we'll turn on to 225. There it's centering, turning to heading 225 inbound. Next thing we're looking for is a two indication to flip over to a from. <clears throat> GPS shows us 0 0.5 from the fix. 0 0.4. CDI is getting sensitive. We'll make minor corrections, but I'm not going to chase the CDI at this point. 0.1 should be flipping over here any time. There's the from indication. Standard rate turn to the left. So in all these examples, I'm hand flying the airplane, so I'm not using autopilot, which really adds a, a several layers of, of challenge. And the reason I do that is um, it creates the um, need to conduct a very careful instrument scan. because you're not relying on the autopilot to fly the airplane. So here we are coming up on a reciprocal heading of 045, and then we're going to, once we roll down, start the clock for one minute. And there's the rollout, starting the clock. So flying by hand requires a lot more discipline and attention to detail and it has a training value for me, so that's why I do that. The patterns don't look perfect, but again, the value for me is the, the training that comes from flying by hand. And there's one minute. Now the control wheel I have here has a stopwatch on it, which is what I'm using, and that's why I'm looking down periodically to, to check my timing. Again, if all goes perfectly well, then CDI will be centered on rollout. But there's lots of factors that would prevent that from happening. One is uh, lack of precision in the turn, winds, wind direction and speed, those sorts of things. There are the 
needle start to move. And I'm hoping I just rolled out just slightly early there because I'm just a bit left of that radial. Reinterception and I'm coming left at 225. And then we're going to fly this into the station. And uh, when it flips uh, from two to from, we're going to pause and take a look at our track log in four flight. Correcting slightly right. Again, slightly because we're so close to the station, we're 0 0.5. We want to avoid chasing the needle. waiting for the from indication. And there it is. So we're going to pause the video and let's see how we did. Now uh, we're bringing up uh, four flight. Let's blow that up a little bit. So there's our inbound leg on heading 120. And that's where we created a slight delay and then initiated our standard rate turn to the left. That brought us slightly inside of the station and then the standard rate turn to the left. Again, time for one minute, standard rate turn, inbound to the station, then standard rate turn, time for one minute, standard rate turn, inbound to the station, and then we just crossed the station. So in this case, a direct entry or a teardrop entry would be perfectly acceptable. So that's it for our holding pattern entry tutorial. As always, thanks for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.